Hi there. This Alchemist video is going to take you through how to analyze a HNMR spectrum for a mystery molecule. This particular example will turn out to be an aromatic molecule. We'll get to that fact a little bit later. Now, the molecule in question has the molecular formula C10H12O. Its carbon-13 NMR has eight peaks and therefore eight different chemical environments with regards to the carbon atoms in its molecular structure. And its peak for HNMR at 3.7 parts per million should normally be found actually at 2.7 parts per million. We'll factor that into our working as we go through this bit by bit. So let's tackle this spectrum one data set at a time, starting with the triplet peak found around the 1.1 parts per million region. So here is a summary of all the information we can gather about this first triplet peak we can see here. Let's first of all talk about the chemical shift. So the chemical shift gives us some information about the chemical environment the hydrogen atoms we're looking at are in. And the lower the number, we say it's uh, upfield and shielded. The further away these hydrogen atoms are in proximity from an electronegative element like an oxygen or a nitrogen. Whereas the higher the number, the closer the proximity of the hydrogen atoms to an electronegative element like an oxygen and a nitrogen. And actually really usefully, data booklets give us good indications of the possible functional groups we're looking at for the hydrogens in that environment based on the particular chemical shift range we've got. So for example, the chemical shift range for this triplet peak here is between 1.1 to 1.4 parts per million. Now that's within a range of one to two parts per million, which is actually found in the data booklet and is indicative of a functional group like this, where we can see the hydrogen atoms are directly attached to carbons in what is clearly an alkyl group. So we know we're looking for an alkyl group for this particular um, set of peaks. Next, we come on to the integration number. Now the integration number tells us the proportion of hydrogens for each chemical environment that are there. Uh, the bigger the number, the greater the number of hydrogens in that environment. Now, very fortunately for our purposes here, if we look at the integration numbers present, three, two, two, four, and one, those add up to 12, and there were 12 hydrogens in the whole molecule. So we can pretty easily deduce that the integration number is directly linked to the exact number of hydrogens in each of the chemical environments. So for example, the integration number for this triplet peak here is three, therefore we are pretty safe to assume that means there are three hydrogens in this particular chemical environment which is producing this peak on the NMR spectrum. Finally, I want to talk about the splitting pattern of this particular set of peaks. We can see three peaks here which is known as a triplet pattern. But if the hydrogen atoms in this particular chemical environment were unaffected by other hydrogens in the molecule in different environments, they would always be a singlet. So something must be going on here, and it's known as spin-spin coupling. Effectively, there are magnetic interactions between the hydrogens in our chemical environment and hydrogens in different chemical environments on adjacent carbons, and it's creating this splitting pattern we can see here. There's a very useful rule we can apply to deal with this known as the N plus one rule, where the N is equal to the number of hydrogens in non-equivalent environments adjacent to the hydrogens on the, in, on the carbons in the environment we're looking at in our particular um, situation. So these three hydrogens are the ones in our environment, which are part of an alkyl group. But if we apply the N plus one rule, because it's a triplet, n plus one is equaling three because there are three peaks. N must therefore equal two, telling us there must be two non-equivalent hydrogens on the adjacent carbon adjacent to the chemical environment that we are investigating. So bringing all that information together, we have three hydrogens in this environment, the most likely identity of the uh, functional group or, or, or part of the molecule we're dealing with here is an alkyl group. And there are two hydrogens on an adjacent carbon to the environment we're looking at. In other words, we are probably looking at a CH3 group, which is adjacent to a CH2 group, which is creating the splitting uh, of our hydrogens here, because these two hydrogens are splitting the three equivalent hydrogens in this environment into a triplet peak. Okay, let's look at the next section, which is the green area here, and this quartet. So we can see with this quartet, 
the chemical shift is approximately between 2.4 to 2.8 parts per million, and that's within a range of two to three parts per million in our data booklet. And now unfortunately we have two options for what hydrogen environment we might be talking about here. We could be talking about hydrogens that are directly attached to some kind of carbonyl, or we are, could be talking about hydrogens that are directly attached to a carbon, which is itself directly attached to an, uh, a benzene ring or an aromatic ring structure. Now, I've said here that this is our more likely candidate, and that's because of some later information. When we get to the peak at uh, seven parts per million, this is very indicative of an arom aromatic molecule. And so I've whittled it down to this by looking ahead to this peak, but we'll come back to this when we're talking about the red section here. Now the integration number is two, therefore there are two hydrogens in this particular chemical environment. And the splitting pattern we can see here is four peaks is known as a quartet. So again, we apply the n plus one rule to under understand what the spin spin coupling is doing here. And we find that n plus one equals four, therefore n equals three. There must be adjacent to the uh, hydrogen environment we're looking at, three non-equivalent hydrogens on the adjacent carbon, which is adjacent to our environment. So again, bringing all that information together, if we look at what our environment could be, well, we are probably talking about this CH2 group here because we have two hydrogens in our chemical environment, okay? But it's being split by three non-equivalent hydrogens next door. Well, that would be these three non-equivalent hydrogens here on this CH3 group, which we've already identified from earlier on. And then we know we're attached to this aromatic ring because that's why we are at this particular region of 2.4, 2.8 parts per million, i.e. within two to three parts per million in terms of our chemical shift. And we've therefore brought all that information together to create this chunk of molecule as our evidence basis. Again, we'll come back to why we think it's this aromatic ring rather than the carbonyl group later. Um, but again, there's so many hydrogens that we need to account for those hydrogens and the aromatic ring has lots of spaces where we can have hydrogens which might help us to reach our total of 12 whereas the uh, carbonyl group unless there's an alkyl group here for example is unlikely to bring enough hydrogens to really account for the hydrogens we seem to be finding in these different chemical environments so again a lot of evidence pointing in the direction of this aromatic ring being the correct answer and we'll find out later on even more so that that's the case when we talk about this splitting peak here. Now let's talk about this blue uh, set of peaks here, this uh, doublet with integration number of two. So again, the chemical shift is now 3.7, but the question did say it should normally be at 2.7. Two let's assume it is at 2.7. Again, that's within two to three parts per million. So we're probably talking about another uh, group of hydrogen atoms that are attached to a carbon which is directly attached to our benzene ring structure because that again falls inside the same re uh, uh, same region uh, which indicates this particular functional group as being the most likely uh, chemical environment where we're finding these hydrogens. Now the integration number is two and again that means there are two hydrogens in our particular chemical environment and the splitting pattern is a doublet. So we apply the n plus one rule which equals two. That means n plus one, there is only one non-equivalent hydrogen in a different chemical environment on an adjacent carbon atom. Let's bring all that information we've got together here. So there's the CH3 group we identified first, there's the CH2 group we identified second, all attached to our um, aromatic ring, our benzene ring structure here. Now, this is the new peak we've identified. How do we know that? Well, it's got two hydrogens, and that's what the um, integration number was telling us. And the splitting pattern, we, we know it's attached directly to the benzene ring because that's what the chemical shift is telling us here. And finally, um, why have I uh, put it here? What's it being split by? Well, um, we know that it's being split by uh, whatever's here, and whatever's here must have at least one hydrogen on it to create the splitting pattern of the doublet. So we've already kind of guessed that whatever this CH2, was CH2 group sorry, is attached to here must have one hydrogen to create the doublet splitting we're seeing on our particular chemical environment. It's not being split by anything here because there are no hydrogens here. This is completely maxed out in terms of bonding. So it's gotta be something here with one hydrogen which is creating the splitting of our CH2 group. Let's now look at this aromatic uh, peak at seven and why it's aromatic. So here is the um, data for our, what clearly seems to be a quartet 
at around about seven parts million. So I've said the chemical shift is between 6.8 6 and 7.4 parts million. That's within the range of 6.7 to 8 parts million, which is indicative, according to a data booklet, of protons directly themselves bonded to the carbons of an aromatic ring structure. Um, now the integration number is four, which implies there are four hydrogens in this chemical environment. Uh, and the splitting pattern is a quartet. Now, initially you're thinking, well, it's being split by uh, N plus one, three non-equivalent hydrogens on adjacent uh, carbon atoms. But that, unfortunately, is a little bit more complex when it comes to aromatic ring structures due to the, the complexities brought by the localized ring structure itself. So that's why we have to be a bit more uh, clever and bring in um, some information like this. So this is some uh, data taken from a data booklet that tells us what pattern you'd expect to see for an aromatic ring structure with the hydrogens uh, in these particular positions on the ring with other groups probably here and here. And you can see that if the hydrogens were uh, in these positions here and here with different groups, R groups here and here, you'd get a set of peaks that look a bit like this. Now, we've got four hydrogens in our environment. So if we had more hydrogens here and here, it would double the integration and double the height of these uh, very um, representative peaks. Now, if you look at what we've got here, it's much taller than this squat set of peaks here. So it's probably highly likely that we have four hydrogens rather than two hydrogens creating exaggerated peaks at these positions, which seems to exactly match what we're seeing on our NMR, HNMR spectrum here. So as, an, as a hard and fast rule, which I tend to apply in most situations, because it can be very hard to memorize all the various patterns you might expect to see for aromatic structures, the hard and fast rule I would always apply is this. If you see a what I'm gonna classify as a messy multiplet, a messy multiple peak uh, uh, set of peaks at, um, at around seven, you are definitely dealing with an aromatic compound. One more time, if you see a messy multiplet, uh, multiple peaks around seven parts million, automatically assume you are now dealing with something that has a benzene ring structure or is an aromatic molecule. Saves you a lot of time and hassle and becomes quite easy to spot once you apply that knowledge. Just before we move on to our final purple peak, let's bring everything we know together. So we know we've got a CH3 group attached to a CH2 group, which is directly attached to the benzene ring and the CH2 group onto our R group over here, which probably has one hydrogen adjacent to this, creating that doublet. Now here is our new information. We now know we have four hydrogens on this benzene ring structure, which is creating this messy multiplet or this messy quartet at around seven parts million. Brilliant. Let's now finish up the molecule and find out what exactly this unknown R group is, which is being uh, contributed by our purple information here. Okay, so we come to the final piece of the puzzle, the purple uh, boxed information, which is seems to be a triplet with an integration number of one and uh, nearing the other end of our HMR spectrum. We're downfield and de-shielded. This means that the protons or hydrogen atoms in, in this environment are going to be in close proximity to an electronegative uh, element like an oxygen or a nitrogen atom. We know it's going to be an oxygen atom based on the molecular formula of the molecule we saw at the start. So the chemical shift appears to be in a range between 9.5 and 9.9 .9 parts per million. That's within a range of 9 to 10 found in our data booklet, which is indicative of this particular functional group, which appears to be um, hydrogen atoms in a carbonyl functional group, particularly in this case, an aldehyde. Um, now, uh, the interest number is one. That means there's only one hydrogen in this chemical environment. We knew that was coming because, of course, the previous uh, piece of information was a doublet being, uh, so the, the doublet was N plus one equals um, two N equals one. So we knew that that was being split by an environment that had only one hydrogen in it, which is this one here doing the splitting. So we could preempt that piece of information. We could also preempt the splitting pattern um, as well because we can see it's a triplet, N plus one equals three, N equals two. That means there are two non-equivalent hydrogen atoms on the adjacent carbon creating the splitting for our particular chemical environment. We knew in advance that was the CH2 group we've already discovered in our molecule creating the splitting pattern for the um, proton or hydrogen atom we're looking at in this environment. So all the information we've gathered is supporting what we're now finding 
in our final piece of evidence. We can bring this all together to give us the total and ratify the final structure of the molecule we think we have, which is CH3, CH2, the aromatic ring structure, CH2, and an aldehyde group at the other end. Now, bringing it full circle, we can then bring in the only piece of information we haven't yet talked about, which is the carbon-13 NMR having eight peaks. Does the molecule we have created map up and match up with that fact that a carbon-13 NMR spectrum should produce eight peaks? Well, let's have a look, shall we? So what I've done here is I've drawn the molecule a little bit bigger, a little bit clearer, and I've also brought back the original information from the question. So we know we're looking for eight different chemical environments, eight different peaks on our carbon NMR spectrum. So let's have a look at how many chemical environments we can see in this molecule. Well, we're looking for a lack of symmetry. We're looking for asymmetry, which was indicative of different chemical environments, different carbon chemical environments. So uh, we've got one environment here for the carbon in the aldehyde group. We've got one environment here for the CH2 group attached between these two groups here. One for the carbon at the beginning of the aromatic ring. Now these two carbons above and below are in the same chemical environment due to the symmetry of the uh, benzene ring structure itself. So these are one environment. So one, two, three, four because of the symmetry. Five because this again is the symmetry of this part of the molecule. These are in identical chemical environments because they were attached to the same thing in both directions. So that's one, two, three, four, five chemical environments. That's six for the carbon at this end here, seven for the CH2 group here, and finally eight for the CH3 group here. So if you count them up, there are eight different chemical environments in terms of carbon environments inside this molecule, which would result in eight peaks on a carbon NMR spectrum. So every single piece of evidence we have generated supports our conclusion that this is the correct structure for the molecule being investigated based on the molecular formula, the carbon NMR information, and the hydrogen NMR spectrum we have fully investigated. And that is how you would um, investigate and interpret the hydrogen NMR and the carbon NMR data for an aromatic molecule. Uh, I really hope this was uh, helpful and helps you to be a better sort of molecular detective and understand um, both carbon and hydrogen NMR spectra and how to extract information from them. I'm looking to do more videos like this in the future to really build up a library of, of carbon and hydrogen NMR example videos. Um, but as always, guys, uh, take care and bye for now.